What up, it's Brandon here. Welcome back to Blader News, your number one rollerblading news source. And for the first time ever recording this, I actually have some coffee in the official Blader News cup. Cheers to that. But anyway, let's just roll into it with some industry news. And the first thing I want to talk about today is some pretty exciting news about a potential film being made about rollerblading. Luke Adams, a 40-year-old rollerblader who has 25 years experience in television, is looking to make a film inspired by the recent surge of old rollerbladers coming back to rollerblading. The name of this film is going to be Old Souls. It's going to be released for free when it's done and I assume it's going to be a documentary style. Luke is planning to crowdfund this film using Kickstarter. Uh, the Kickstarter page is supposed to be launched by the 1st of June. Right now he's planning on just getting some social media buzz about it so please check out the link in the description and read up about it. Seems like it's going to be very cool. I haven't seen much good things come from Kickstarter personally, especially films I've heard usually doesn't go too well because once you have a Kickstarter you need tears and it kind of just overcomplicates things but I'm excited nonetheless and I really hope it goes well and I can't wait to see it especially since it's releasing for free. It's super sick. Good luck Luke. But moving on to another story. This is actually from a few months ago. I forgot to put it in the last Blade of News <laughs> but we had some Razer Genesis Aragon Pro Skates spotted on eBay for a thousand dollars. Obviously this would be a rare item but that price is absolutely ridiculous to me. I have no idea if it's sold or not. I really hope it didn't. <laughs> but it does bring up a question that I want to ask you guys. How much would you pay top for your favorite skate that you can no longer get in brand new condition? Do you think it's ever gonna reach the point where people are actually gonna be paying thousands for these skates that you can't get anymore? Let me know in the comments below. In other overpriced news, rollerblading was actually featured in a Gucci ad. Well, not exactly. They just had an ad with a dude wearing some old oxygen skates, which is before my time again, but uh, it's pretty cool. They look skated. They don't look like a brand new pair, so I wonder how that all came together. I highly doubt this had any effect on the industry at all. I highly doubt it inspired anyone to skate, but it was cool to see rollerblading in another form of kind of mainstream advertisement. And it wasn't the only ad to feature rollerblading as well. There's actually been another ad from KFC featuring a rollerblader crashing into someone. Uh, the first time I heard about this was someone saw it on my last video, which I couldn't believe. Some pretty good targeted ads there. I think it's really cool that rollerblading is getting in some more ads and I hope to see some more cringe and <laughs> some more ads to come. But anyway, enough about that. Let's move on to some other news to do with some pro skaters. Starting off with Nils Jansen. He premiered his new VOD mind your step in a cinema and it looked like it was a really good time. Uh, the whole skate video seems to be focused on more than just skating. It seems to be pushing a kind of theme about, you know, thinking about your impact on the world, which I really like. Uh, it's 30 minutes long, it's only 7 US dollars and 10% of the profits go to helping a charity. It's not very often you get a $7 VOD that's more than 7 minutes long, so I think this is an absolute steal. Definitely worth checking out. Nose was even spotted on a Jimmy Fallon style show I assume, <laughs> and this post is tagged in on Facebook. I have no idea what it is, I couldn't find any information on it. I figure that's probably because it's not in English, so I don't really have much idea on what to search to find that, but it looked really cool nonetheless, and it was really cool to see Rollbang once again out in some mainstream media. And I think Nils is a really good ambassador for Rollbang. He's gonna inspire more people to try it, which is really cool. Shout out to Nils. And more pro news, Beam Skates has officially announced Sean Castle as their latest pro. I think this is a really great addition to the Them's team. I've been a huge fan of Sean Castle since the Truth days. I watched that DVD like a million times. He's got such a good style and such a good look on skating. And the one minute section he put out to announce it is absolutely fire and I highly recommend checking it out. It'll be linked in the description. Speaking of legendary pros though, Joe Ackerson is still absolutely killing it. He just won fees again <laughs> and he told his mate that if he ever had a victory lap again he'd, he'd end up by throwing it something crazy and what he did is he threw a double backflip and damn it looked painful but so sick and I can't wait to see him land that so <laughs> even better than Joe just winning every comp there ever has been he's wanting to return the favor and he's been doing a golden blade ticket challenge where someone can win an all expenses paid trip to compete in fees. And I figured it was already unwinnable since of these clips from Jay Moon. He's a young gun, absolutely killing it. These lines he's putting out were so perfect and smooth, uh, but they were more than three tricks. And we also just had some breaking news where the winners are actually being announced now. <laughs> and it wasn't Jay Moon, which I'm very surprised about. I figured it's because it's, he didn't do a three trick line, but one of the winners did a four trick line as well. So I don't know, it's weird. 
Oh well. <laughs> Shout out to Joe Ackerson for putting something so cool together. Uh, remember his GoFundMe is still live, so if you want to support him, please go check it out. I know I've been talking a lot of shit on it, but he does deserve to get paid properly. Nonetheless. Speaking of Joe, spotted on his Instagram story, he's been seen with some metal Salomon soul plates. Now I can't wait to hear more about this. I'd love to know what skating a metal soul plate in a metal frame is like and whether it slides really well and how heavy it is. Because that sounds ideal to me. I don't know why. For some reason, I think a Aeon style boot that's like metal would be absolutely perfect. But then I kind of put it together how heavy that would be and it'd be kind of ridiculous. But I just think about how responsive that would be. <laughs> and the sliding of sole, metal on metal, must be so good. That's just my thoughts. So I would love to know what you guys think. Do you think this metal movement is just a phase or do you think it's actually the future and it's going to be becoming the new norm? Speaking of products though, let's move on to everyone's favorite part of the show, products. <laughs> Starting off with a new skate, the Rossi's Team Skate. This was designed by the Rossi's Pro Team. It's in this very unique sesame color which is very interesting. I don't know if I'm a big fan, but I do like that they're going for something a little different. I'd hate to think how the royalties work on the skate. If it's split between all of them, must be like 10 cents, but <laughs> I'm hoping one day we'll have every color of the rainbow in the M12, but I'm still gonna be sticking to my nice navy blue Joaxon ones. They're definitely my favorite by far. But we do actually have another skate being teased, and that's the Ciba CJ. It's got the usual Ciba sleek black top quality skate look to it. And that answers the question from a few Blader News back where we didn't know whether CJ was going to be with FR or Ciba. Well, obviously he's with Ciba, so <laughs> glad to see him finally get another pro skate. We also got a new SL Soul Plate color, I'm pretty sure, and that is a very bright pink. Uh, Razor posted up this weird color combo of the mint with the pink, and they're calling it Candy Floss. And it has this look like the the big trend in scootering at the moment, the like fade multicolored metal look. And at first, I thought it was disgusting, but honestly, I don't hate it that much now. It's kind of cool seeing two colors that really shouldn't be together together. <laughs> we also got a new backpack coming from 5050, and it's the spin on the old 5050 backpack, making it a bit more functional. <laughs> uh, just from what I've seen in the comments, the drink bottle holder on it now can actually fit a drink bottle in it, which is cool. And I'm glad to see more backpacks coming out. I'm still in search of the perfect Roll Bay backpack. I've gotten really close to finding it with the Blade Club bag, but we're not there yet, I don't think. Still got a little bit of way to go. We also got some new frames teased by Mushroom Blading. It's called the Mushroom Blading Big Block Frames, I'm pretty sure. They are not metal and they're 50% core. And that is, <laughs> that is engraved on the top of the frame, whatever that means. <laughs> uh, this, these frames were a prototype frame that K2 was making that they sent to Leon over on Mushroom Blade and he got to try them out and he really likes them and he wished they could actually be a product and it seems like he's been able to get them for himself, which I really like. They're essentially just a massive H-block flat frame, which sounds sick <laughs> and really cool. Uh, they fit 65 millimeter wheels in them and that's even printed on the top of the frame, which I kind of wish a lot more frames did. And yeah, I can't wait to see them out in the market and people trying them out. And finally, you've probably all heard of this now, but we have a new wheel company that's doing things right. This is called Red Eye Wheels. They're building their company on actually paying pros a proper royalty per skate. They've been really open about it, kind of like them, which I really like. I really like this movement of companies being open about how much they're actually supporting the pro skaters. Because in my opinion, pro skaters are the biggest part of what drives sales to roll bay. but I mean, I don't own a roll bay company, but it's the biggest thing that's ever influenced me to buy skates myself. It's all wheels and stuff. It's whatever the pro that I like is skating, but maybe that's just me. Anyway, they've already announced a really solid team. They have Russell Day, John Fromm, Josh Kowicki, and Sneaky, which is a really solid team. And I can't wait to see more stuff from them and I'm glad they're getting supported. That's it for products. But before we move on, I wanna have a quick question for you guys. I'm being a bit torn on how I wanna do products for Blader News, uh, whether I want to report on absolutely everything that comes out, you know, meaning like like last month 5050 came out with the yellow frames and you know, there's always like a new wheel company coming out um, or whether I want to just do something that's kind of game changing and different and big, meaning like 5050 brought out wheels, 5050 brought out bags, you know, it's something new, something you wouldn't expect. Would you rather me talk about absolutely everything that comes out or just the really notable things? Let me know, I'll do a poll. Let's check it out. Finally, let's get into my favorite part of Blade News, media you guys should check out. Starting off with Lino on his last day in South Africa, fakie bombing 
I don't know what this hill is called, but this massive hill. And oh my God, I was terrified watching him attempt this. <laughs> um, I won't spoil it. You have to go watch it to see if he makes it to the bottom, but it's definitely a good watch. We also got nine minutes of pure fire for Blade Life, featuring Bobby Spazoff. I highly recommend checking that out. As well as a nice short edit from last month's Blade of New Stars, I Roll New York that I really enjoyed watching. It's got some really good skating in it. You should definitely check that out as well. And finally, we got this controversial video that really took me by surprise. And it's got to do with the Alley of Unity versus Front Sav. <laughs> Looks like it's some kind of blading party. It's got a bunch of pros in it and uh, the dudes film and just go around asking random pros and people what the, this picture of this trick is. And oh, it gets, it gets controversial, I'll tell you that. But I also am very embarrassed for the person at the end. So, I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I do recommend checking that out. And just to finish it once and for all, because this is definitely going to finish it once and for all, I'm going to put a poll up in the corner. Let me know if the trick should be called a front savannah or an alley of unity. Just before we finish this episode of Blade News, I do have another channel I want to shout out, and that is a channel called Roll Life. Now, this is a relatively new channel, but I can see a lot of potential in it. The guy running this channel, has a lot of passion for rollerblading, I can tell, and he's got a real skill for capturing it on film. And he's also just a really good skater. Uh, I've really enjoyed his videos, especially his recent one where he's just bombing around whatever city he's in. It looks like a lot of fun. It looks very scary at the same time. And I highly recommend checking him out. It's really good. It'll be linked in the description. And that's it. But as always, this is Blader News. It's a discussion. I want to know what your thoughts are on any of the stories I talked about today. I'll be in the comments talking to you as always. If you want to support me in the Blader News series, you can buy the official Blader News cup or you can just subscribe. That helps a lot as well. But anyway, thanks so much for watching. Huge shout out to my patrons, Brothers Blading, Deb Dennis, Fabian, Freaky Geeks Podcast, Flowey, Matt and Mike. You guys are amazing. And I'll see you guys next month or next week. Peace out.